We are looking at the grade 12 IT prac exam from 2019, but this is the June and the June exam, not the November. Um, and we're going to be doing question two, the SQL question for the databases. Now we have question two over here. Uh, the key to question two, we're going to be moving up and down a lot. So I apologize for the scrolling in advance. Um, but the key is to know what the fields are called. So we've got TBL plants and TBL orders, and we need to know what the field names are. Make sure that we use them correctly. Um, so there we go. So those are the types of things we need to be aware of. So there's the two ADO tables that we're going to be interacting with. And there's a whole bunch of buttons that we can do for the SQL. And so we want this type of stuff. So they've told us, have, I, have they told us anything about, so they haven't mentioned, I think there's an appendice. If I go right, I said, apologize for the scrolling, right to the bottom, you will see there is a whole bunch of details. So you can tear this out so you can refer to the correct name. So, but it looks like it's the same as what's in the diagram. So I'm going to go back up, oh, too far, back up to this. Okay, so let's try the SQL. So first question, boom. So use the diagram to help you, to guide you in what the fields must be, okay? So we're going to go to our program here. So here it is. And I'm going to scroll down a bit here. That's, it's, there we go. There's the one. And so all we're going to be doing is writing our SQL in there, and it will run the code for us. That's the beauty of SQL. So let's have a look. So first of all, we want to display all the details. So this, uh, remember, there's there's three, the four types of SQL statements. There's a select, and then there's an insert, edit, or update, or delete. That's if you change in the database. Now, majority of the questions will be select. There'll probably be one, maybe two of the insert, delete, or update. So if we display stuff, it's normally a select statement. So we're going to do select. So it's going to be select. Then we need to say what are, what fields are we selecting? We are selecting all the fields. So instead of typing them all out, we can just use the star. Select star. Then you say from which table are we getting this information from? We, from the TBL plant table. So TBL plants, make sure you spell it correctly. And are there any criteria where the criteria, we want the criteria to be rows. Now it looks like it's just rows. It doesn't say that there's rows in there. So we want it. So where the criteria or category was a criteria or category category why did i say criteria cat uh, gory gory cat is the same as rose now this is a text field so text we must put in quotes but not use double quotes because we don't want our single quotes to conflict with the delphi quotes okay so let's just look at that let's see if that runs is that all that they want is there any ordering do they say sort by or something do they say sort no nothing look, look so let's look at the data Look at our one. We want to, oh, don't make it so big. Display it. So does it look like it's the same? Looks like it's the same. Hey, yeah, that looks pretty good. So there we go. So that's it. So just remember, just before we move on, just remember, uh, so, so smelly, what? Smelly feet will give horrible odors. Just remember that. So it's always select which fields then it's from which is which tables then you go where there's where you put your criteria group bar that's if we'll get your group bar probably having that's if you've got criteria in your group bar and then order order bar so that's those are your your things so smelly feet will give horrible odors okay so just remember that for getting the ordering right, okay? So I'll write it here. Smelly feet will give horrible odors. How do you spell odors? It's odors, okay, I don't know. But you get the idea. So there we go. Smelly feet will give horrible odors. So there we go, that's how you get the order right. So let's go to the next question. We want to display just those four fields. So if we go straight away, we just go to the select. So we're going to say we display. So it's going to be a select. Which fields are we displaying? We're displaying plant code, category, color, size of plants. So plant code, category, color. Now, how did they spell color? Yeah, they spell it like South Africa. And then size of pot size of pot one word okay so those are my fields from which table from the 
TBL plants table, TBL plants. You can carry on typing here if you want. I'm going to type it here so we can see it a bit easier. I'm going to keep adding here, but just remember if you're going to do something like this, remember to add a little space there so that it, does, so it doesn't put whatever you put here right against it so it doesn't recognize TBL plants. Where we want to display all of them, where all the plants in the flower and rose categories that have pink as a color. So I'm doing the pink as a color easy. So okay, so no, that's more difficult because there's pink somewhere in it. So the category must be flower or rose. So where the category equals the word flower or the category equals the word rose. But those are text fields. So we're going to put them in double quotes, double quotes, or double quotes. Or category, if you spell it right, Mr. Long. Equals right. Did I put do I spell category wrong twice? Yo, Mr. Long. Category. Okay, so that's the one criteria. Plus put a space there so we can put some more stuff here. The other cat the other the criteria that they said, or the color the color must have some sort of pink in it. So it could start with the word pink, it's got pink somewhere in it. The word pink is somewhere in it. Okay, so there we're going to use wild cards. So there we're going to say where the color, we're not going to say equals, not equals, it's like. And then we want to say the word pink. But there must be pink somewhere in there. So we use wild cards. We use star as a wild card. It could start with the word pink, it could have pink somewhere in it, or it could have pink somewhere at the end. But when you, that's if you use normal SQL, the stars will work. But in Delphi, Delphi doesn't like the stars when you use the like. So we can use, we can replace them with percentage signs. That's what you do. So you can use a star here, like we did in the previous one, for select. But when you get to your like and you use stars, if you did this in access, you would use stars, but you're going to use those all marks. Now, this isn't going to work, and I'll tell you why. So let's run it and see if it at least gives us something. And I'm telling you now why there's a little problem here. Boom, boom, boom. So let's run the second quote. First of all, it doesn't says there's a problem missing operator category let's go fix that problem first what was it oh it's this category and we got another criteria so we're going to say and the color must be pink i forgot we can't just have a little random like criteria but this is still not gonna work wow. let's have a look okay so we've got we've got some results here so we've definitely got some flowers and some roses in the categories do we have them yes yes no we've got lots of flowers Oh, lots of flowers. Oh, and there we got some roses at the bottom. Okay, the problem is, if you have noticed, my roses are the only ones that are pink. But, and then all my other flowers are, got, it doesn't matter if they've got pink, they use all of them. Why is that happening? That's because of this or and this and. When you've got multiple criteria, okay, the and takes precedence over the or. So if I do write this down, so we've got criteria one, or criteria two and criteria three. So what happens is actually it's checking this criteria first. All the category equals rose and the color equals pink. That's one option or any flower, any, any color as long as the category is flower. So we want to look at this first. Combine it's either this or this and, the, and then as well as the color must be pink for both flower and for rose. So you actually need to do this. You actually need to go, if you want the or to happen first, you want this to be first, then the and. At the moment, the and's going first. It's doing those two criteria first. We're going to put brackets around those two criteria like that. So if I do that, if I put a bracket around category equals that or that, so it will only find the flowers or, or roses combined with any color that is pink. So that's the little trick there. So if you find that then just by using your brackets a little bit better there we go we can see we've got a lot better results there they're only pink hot pink and there we go so there we go that is working so just remember that little trick okay let's go to the next one uh we want to display the average price is there a price field there's a price field on the t the average price based on the category okay so this is a little bit tricky so when you're working on average price, and you're, there's no field called average price, there's just price. So we want to create an average price field using 
SQL. So this is also display. So let's look here. So we're going to go up to 1.3. We are going to select the average AVG of the price field and we want to give it the title as average price. Okay. So we want it like that. There we go. We can even put it in square brackets. Or something. And we want that from the TBO plants table. Okay. So that's what we want. Let's first test it out. Okay. That's the first thing that we want to do. But we probably want to display it. So there's the average price for all of them. and But we they probably want us to display it as a currency. Display it as a currency. So we want to change the format of it. So I'm going to change the format of this average price. It takes in two things. And then the second parameter is what is, I think if you just type in currency in double quotes, I think it'll work. So format, take that word, that, that number, convert it to a format, to your currency. Let's see if that works. We build in this answer slowly but surely. Boom. Okay. That's not working. Why is that not working? Average price as currency. Did I spell, oh, I didn't spell currency right. That's why. Spelling is shocking today for some reason. There we go. That's better. Okay, average price. But now I want it for each group. So I want to actually have the average price and I want to have the category. First the category and then the average price of each of those categories. Now this won't work. The moment I add category to an aggregate field, it will not work. It'll give an error. Why? Because you can't do that unless you group it by what... The, the ones that aren't being aggregated. So the price is being aggregated, but the category isn't. So at the end here, you must have group bar. And here you specify the, the fields that are not being like any calculations, like in this case, the category. So group by category. So whenever you've got an average or a sum or a count and you've got another field, that field, that other field, you'll have to group by that field. That's the little tip there whenever you have in aggregate fields with other stuff. If it's just one answer, that's fine. But yeah, we want to group it. Does that look right? Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. Boom, boom. Good. Okay, I think if we go down, we get shrub. There we go. Boom. So there we go. That's that one done. Okay, let's go 1.4. Okay. Okay, display the invoice num, the description, and the number ordered fields of all the items in TBL orders from invoice F2. Now I've got a funny feeling some of these fields are from other tables. So let's look because we haven't used the other table yet. So we want, what was it? Let's remember invoice, invoice num description number ordered. Description is definitely in TBL plants. So TBL plants definitely has the the description but the invoice number and the number ordered are from tbl order so we're dealing with two tables here and there's a little trick there for two so the moment we've got two tables so we're going to select those fields so we'll get to them now we're going to say from we're going to get from both tbl plants and from comma tbl orders you don't put an and here just comma where it doesn't matter what the criteria are that are coming straight away we will have a criteria that says what is the joining field between these two tables what connects these two tables so there you can see there's a plant code and there's a plant code the both of them have a plant code so that's the connection between them so the plant code of tbl plants is connected to the plant code of tbl orders they would have probably specified that somewhere in the descriptions yeah, if you read it'll probably tell you that okay probably in the appendix as well so you need to specify where tbl plants dot plant code i know we're not displaying plant code but we need to say that it's the same as tbl orders dot plant code so those two fields have to be connected it's possible that they have different names but there is a field a foreign key from one is equal to the primary key of the other there is a connection somehow you must specify the where those two are connected whenever you're dealing with two tables and now we want to specify which field boom boom, boom. We want invoice number, description, order number. I'm actually just going to copy that. I don't know if it's actually going to work, but let's see. No, it's not going to paste. Why will it be paste? Invoice num, invoice num, description, 
and number number ordered from tbl plants and orders where they are joined at that field but there's another criteria and at the same time the invoice number is f2 so invoice num equals is it invoice num invoice num equals f2 which is a text field so we must put double quotes around it if we spelt everything correctly then it should work so let's try it and boom there we go and does it look the same 46 42 yeah oh, that looks right okay so there we go that's the last okay the last one last one quickly let's do the last one while we still got time and let's go where's the question okay so yeah we're gonna insert it looks like what differs order sometimes so what we want to do once an outstanding delivery has been made the user must enter in the item number the delivery has been made write in SQL statements to modify the number delivered to the number ordered so the so there so we type in so we type in art we type in item number code six it'll go to six and it'll convert the number ordered to the number delivered looks like we're just dealing with tbl orders in this case okay this means we are actually changing we are not adding we are not deleting but we are editing the one which is according to the inputted value from the user so let's go look so we get the item number which we're going to just put a six in there so we're going to get the item number so we are going to update a table we're going to update the table tbl orders so let's update that one what are we updating it to we are setting so there's a set field or set property we're going to set the number delivered must now be the same as the number order so we're changing number delivered so that was the one was good. So we're changing num, is it num delivered? Number delivered is going to, is it number delivered? Yes, number delivered must be the same as numbered ordered. It's going to be the same as now number ordered. If I do this in the wrong order, then number ordered will change to number delivered. I want number delivered to change to whatever number ordered is. And if I leave it like that, it's going to change all of them. But I don't want to change all of them. Where? And what's my criteria here? My criteria is where the item number is it item number? The item number is this is a six is equal to a six. Okay, but we don't know if it's going to be six. It depends on what the user types in over here. It's going to be whatever is in s item num. So it, where it is equal to s item num now the problem here is that s item num is now in the blue part we don't want it to be in the blue part we want it to be in the delphi part because we want it to refer to the variable s item num so i just close the the sql string there and then i add s item num now let's just double check is s item num a number if it's a number then that will be fine if it was text then you would have to put a double quote there and you would need some sort of double quote at the end so you would have to add like a quote double quote quote but that's i think s item number is a number so we don't even need to do that so let's look at it update the orders set the number delivered to the number ordered where item num is the same as the s item num. and if you make a mistake there's normally a restore database button at the bottom that you can is there one i don't know it's normally a restore database so let's try it update item so let's look at number six do you see six it says 85 is the same as 85 they're all fine is there anyone that's different there we go let's do 11. you see 76 must change to 35 so let's do 11. update items so we're going to change number 11. database changed so you see this change so let's go look 11 ah urethra i mean rika they are the same so there we go so that's how you do those ones oh Quite challenging, but we can do this. Not too bad. We can do those ones. So those are the SQL steps. The next video, we'll do the rest of the database question. If you're still struggling with SQL, then go to our YouTube channel, click on the playlist and find the videos to explain SQL to you. Leave a like, leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.